He's always in the kitchen whenever it's time to eat. Hey y'all, welcome to the Now We're Cooking Olive Oil Show. Today I'm in my kitchen and I'm gonna show you how to make tomato soup with some awesome homegrown tomatoes. So the items that you will need for this recipe are about eight cups of tomatoes, which I'm gonna use about 12 tomatoes, but I have some extra ones in case I need more. You're also gonna need four tablespoons of Squisito garlic infused olive oil, two cups of diced yellow onions, one whole head of garlic, two cups of chicken or vegetable stock, a half a cup of milk, um, a half a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese or any cheese that you like. Today I'm actually going to use Gouda and four tablespoons of fresh basil. You're also going to need salt and pepper and sugar if you like. I personally don't add sugar to my recipes, but uh, that's, you know, everybody's own personal preference. So my grandpa always used to say, you add a little sugar to everything and it makes it taste better. And that's, you know, like I said, your personal preference. So first thing we're going to do since we have fresh tomatoes and there is, uh, is we're going to blanch them. So I'm going to stick them in some boiling water just so we can get the skins off. And I want you to know that there is no shame in using canned tomatoes. I've done it plenty of times. Um, in the winter time, we don't have fresh tomatoes and store-bought tomatoes don't always taste so good. So I'm just going to stick these in this boiling water and that way we can get the skins off easily. And we're gonna boil these for just a couple of minutes and then we're gonna peel the skins off and get that core out of there. I'm gonna cut this out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the tomatoes are ready and you can kind of tell uh, when they're ready whenever the skin starts to peel back, just like that. And then they're gonna peel super easy, but I'm just gonna take them out first and put them in a separate bowl so they can cool. Otherwise, I'm not gonna be able to get my hands on them. Woo, and that took about two minutes. Oh, they smell so good. I was so lucky to score these tomatoes. And if y'all know, or if you don't know, Jill, she has a YouTube channel called Whispering Willow Farm, and you can follow them on YouTube and learn so much about farming. And look at these tomatoes. They are amazing. That was a nice trade. I scored big yesterday. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do now is set these aside and let them cool for just a minute because we have to start uh, cooking our onions. So I'm gonna get the onions chopped up and the garlic chopped up. I waste so much of the onion because I don't feel like I need to, uh, I don't try to save any and like peel all the skin off. Isn't that awful? I'm so wasteful. There's a little bit of skin. See, I'm doing some, but I just really messed this onion up. I never cut onions up like this. That's okay. <laughs> Let me grab another onion. Sure. Okay. <laughs> like what? A, I can't think and do something at the same time. I mean, this is ridiculous. Like that's not how I cut up onions. <laughs> Hey y'all, I'm interrupting this video to bring you a discount code. So enter the code BASIL at the checkout and get 10% off of your entire order. Plus I'll throw in this bottle of basil. And at the end of this video, I add olive oil to the top of the tomato soup. This would be really awesome to try. Y'all enjoy. Okay, so you're gonna want to just get the onion good and peeled and you don't have to chop it super fine because we are gonna end up blending it all anyway. So just get it chopped up and we're gonna get it in the pan with our four tablespoons of garlic oil. Woo! 
my eyes are burning. That is a strong onion there. I'm gonna get the pan turned on and get the olive oil warming up. Now, don't get a super close shot of this uh, fuzzy pan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so while I'm cutting that up, I'm gonna put four tablespoons of garlic oil. Normally, I'm gonna start that over because look, I've got fuzz on everything. Why is everything so fuzzy? Those towels, I guess, are super fuzzy. Don't get a close up of this, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and warm up four tablespoons of garlic oil. I normally don't measure, but I'm gonna do this for y'all. So that's four, I think. See, I lose count. That's out of the way, so I'm gonna let that warm up and I'm gonna cut up the garlic. What a pain garlic is. But it's so okay. worth it, y'all. Oops, it's okay. Got one little sacrifice in there. So if you've never chopped garlic, which I have to admit, it's easier to buy minced, but fresh is always better. An easy way to get the skin off is, I don't know if you saw that, you just take the knife and pop it down and then the skin just bust off the outside. Well. That wasn't, I better do that again. So if you've never used uh, fresh garlic, a good way to get the skin off is just to put the knife on the garlic and just tap it and then the skin kind of bust and then you can peel it a little bit better. A little bit better. It's super slimy though, <laughs> so it's slippery. So don't feel bad if you lose a few in the trash can. It happens. You know what we need to do is a video on roasted garlic and, um, and then we can just, you know, roast whole cloves of garlic. That would be good and just smear it on. Yeah. Yeah. I put some whole garlic cloves like this in with some roasted vegetables I was eating the other night and I went straight for the garlic whenever it was time to eat. <laughs> I just started eating the garlic and I think I ate every single garlic clove before I ate any of the vegetables. Cause it's so good when you roast it whole, cloves, and they just melt and it changes the texture, it changes the intensity. It's really good. So if you've never roasted garlic, whole cloves like this, and you can just throw them in anything. It's amazing. And don't think that it's gonna be as strong cause once you've roasted it, it, uh, it really um, changes the intensity. Oh, time consuming garlic. Mm -hmm. And then you're just gonna mince it. But again, we are gonna blend this. So get it small, get it fine, but you don't really have to get it teeny tiny. And it's so slippery. Watch those fingers. I always wanted a good knife and I finally got one. I just like how it comes to a point right there. And that way, whenever you're cutting, you can pick it up, you know, and it's, um, it, it, it just works better. Uh, it seems to rock really well. Yeah, yeah, that's a good word. It rocks really, really well. So I'm just gonna go over this a little bit and then my skillet is super warm. Maybe too warm, but I, are you ready? I'm gonna, I'm ready. okay. Okay, so my skillet is super duper hot with the four tablespoons of garlic oil. I'm gonna add the onions and the garlic. Actually, I'm gonna add the onions first and let them cook a little bit before I add the garlic. And my favorite seasoning and this is a good time to go ahead and season up your onions, is the seasonella herbal salt. And this is amazing on everything. I feel like if people don't have this in their household, they're really missing out. So this is a good time just to sprinkle some. I always like to salt as I'm cooking. And then the pepper that I use is the Pennsylvania pepper. All of this, all these products are on our website and we will put the links in the description um, they, this pepper has, I, I've said this a, a bunch on our other videos, but it has red bell pepper, green bell pepper, onion, garlic, and celery seed, as well as black pepper. 
So it kind of covers all your bases there. And uh, it, gives, it gives a really good flavor. So you get those onions cooking down. And we'll let those cook until they're translucent. And uh, we'll let this keep on cooking. And then we will work on our tomatoes. And I'm going to pour this water out. I'm going to use the same pot that I cooked the tomatoes in or that I blanched the tomatoes in. I'm just going to pour the water out. And I'm going to do the best I can with peeling them. Super easy. And then coring them. And I'm just going to throw that in there and then throw the whole tomatoes in there. Easy, easy, easy. And like I said, I have made this recipe uh, in a pinch with canned tomatoes lots of times. I mean, that's one of those things where I'm tired and I come home and I say, what do you want for dinner? And my husband says, he knows how tired I am and he'll say something sweet like, how about tomato soup? I would love tomato soup. And I'm like, oh, thank you. He knows that it's so easy. So I've done it with canned tomatoes. If you are lucky enough to have had a good harvest of tomatoes in your garden and you've canned them, that's a great way to use your tomatoes too. And this would be super fast if you already had your tomatoes canned and already had them done up like this. Woo, slippery. Come back here. I'm trying to get away. You know, it would probably be better if I just went ahead and cut these up a little bit. So I'm just going to do that just so it can give them a head start whenever we. So how about we just do that? It's going to look like we've massacred somebody in here. One casualty. <laughs> oh man, I'm not wasting that tomato. Don't think I won't wash it off and put it in the soup. <laughs> Look, clean as a whistle. Nobody knows. <laughs> it happens to everybody. Okay, so I was lucky enough to get these tomatoes from somebody that grew them, and I have a garden but I did not get very many tomatoes. As a matter of fact, the tomatoes that I have from my garden are in a little bowl over there, in the sad little bowl over there on the, uh, on the counter. But um, what would y'all rather use? I mean, do you, when you're um, cooking your soups, do you use canned? Do you can your own tomatoes? Do y'all have gardens? I mean, I don't know uh, about y'all, but sometimes I have them and sometimes I don't have time for growing a garden. It just depends on the year. It depends on what's going on in my life. And um, matter of fact, my grandma asked me yesterday if I had my uh, greens in the garden. She said, you ain't growing no turnip greens. I said, not this year, grandma. I am, I don't have it in my, I don't have the time in my schedule this year. Um, I'm just gonna buy them because I have friends that have gardens that I can support them. So, I mean, that's what I'm gonna do this year. So that's my plan. Hey, if y'all haven't been on our channel very long, um, we are new to YouTube. So um, if you like what we're doing and you wanna subscribe and you wanna uh, be notified when we come out with a new recipe, you can hit that notification bell and uh, like our videos and that helps us um, know that you like what we're doing and help us continue uh, making more content for y'all to watch. Look at all these delicious tomatoes in here. Oh my goodness. That worked out perfectly. Perfect timing because it's time now to turn the onions and to add the garlic. So before I even wash my hands off, I'm gonna grab this garlic and throw it in the pan. And the garlic won't take long to cook. And it's gonna smell so good in here, real quick. Nothing like a cast iron skillet. 
cooking onions and garlic. So I went and grabbed some basil out of my garden. I still have a little bit of stuff in my garden, but I got a few sprigs of basil and it smells so good. But I was thinking you could really change this recipe up if you wanted to make it more of like a Mexican tomato soup. You could use cilantro instead of basil. You could use the lime oil instead of the garlic oil whenever you're cooking down the vegetables and give it more of a, a Southwest flavor and that would be delicious. You could even use, if you like spicy, you could use the green chili oil when you're cooking down your vegetables and to even top your soup. That's something that we do a lot anyway because my son doesn't like spicy. So we will, uh, when we sit down to eat, like I'll cook it all like this, normal, mild and then when we sit down to eat we always top our soups with some kind of olive oil and me and my husband always go for the green chili oil it's called back Loudy green chili oil and it's spicy and it gives it such an amazing flavor so that's a that's a tip you can try something different make it change the whole thing the whole you know every day just make it totally different you could use dill oil give it all different flavor so the onions and the garlic are ready what i'm gonna do is put them in the pot with the tomatoes. I'm gonna grab this because it's gonna be hot. Oh, this is where you build your muscles, cast iron. Okay, and you really don't even have to stir it up. So what you do now is add your two cups of stock. You can use chicken, you can use any kind of vegetable stock. Whatever you, whatever you choose. And now, if you have an immersion blender, I would recommend using an immersion blender because it just makes this process a lot easier. You don't have to take the tomatoes out of the pan and put them into a blender, but if you only have a blender, that works perfectly. So this is just saves the steps. So what I'm gonna do is uh, take the whole pot over to this other counter where I have the immersion blender plugged up and we are going to blend it up. That's good. So then you bring it back over to your heat and you just let it warm up. And you're gonna let that warm up and get, uh, oh, look at that. That is, I wish y'all could smell this. It smells so good. And so we are going to just let that, we, we didn't blend it until it was just super runny. But we're just gonna let that heat up and then we'll add our milk and our cheese. Now this is, at this point, you probably want to, before it gets too hot, get a spoon and taste it and see if you need any more salt or pepper. Be a good time to season. And I know me, I'll always add salt, especially to tomatoes. Yep. <laughs> so I love this. It has so many good flavors in it. Those tomatoes, have, they're just sweet, and the onion and the garlic. Gives it a lot of flavor. Okay, so I don't really ever tell, I try not to say how much salt and pepper to put in because everybody's different. I mean, somebody may tasted the tomato soup before and say that it doesn't need any salt. So, I mean, salt it how you like it. I'm not even gonna say how much. You have to do that yourself. <laughs> There's little pieces of fuzz flying around here. <laughs> From my, I have to get a different towel, that's ridiculous. Okay, Steel's fixing to help me uh, make some bread to go with this tomato soup, but in the meantime, we're gonna put, go ahead and put the milk. It's, it's warmed up, we're gonna put the milk, a half a cup of milk and a half a cup of cheese. I have way more than a half a cup of cheese here. Ah, I almost lost my spatula in the soup, but I saved it. I'm gonna put some cheese in. Like I said, Parmesan is great, but if you have something different, don't feel like you have to be married to Parmesan. You can use Gouda or cheddar. I've got sharp cheddar and Gouda in this. And so whatever you like, feta, feta sprinkles would be good on top too. So 
Anyway, I'm gonna let that warm up and that'll just kind of melt into it. Okay, so Steel is going to help me make the bread. Aren't you? <laughs> so I'm gonna stir that tomato soup one more time because I don't want the cheese to get on the bottom and burn. I'm gonna turn it down so it doesn't burn anything on the bottom. I'm gonna turn it way down because it just really needs to heat now and it's gonna be ready to go. So we're gonna add the, this sober dough bread mix, if you've never used it, it's so easy. You use the mix and one bottle of beer. It's called sober dough because uh, it calls for beer, but you can use sparkling water. And since I don't have any beer, I'm using sparkling water. So one bottle of sparkling water. You wanna stir that up for me? Okay. And normally you can put it in a loaf pan and that will make it bread-like, but we want it to be crusty bread. So what we're gonna do is just dump it on a sheet pan and it's gonna be more thin and a little bit uh, more crusty, which is what we want to go with the tomato soup. Oh, you're doing so good. Now this, hold on to the bolson. This uh, Mountain Valley sparkling water is only 11.3 ounces. So what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of water because it's not, it needs just a little bit of water. It's, it was almost 12 ounces. I mean, you need some help? Ooh, oh, muscle, 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 muscle. Okay, get our pan. That's all Isn't that easy? Yeah. Even a seven year old can make that bread, huh? Yeah. Okay, you wanna scrape it? Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, here, grab it. Ugh. Okay, I got it, now scrape it. Ah. <laughs> yeah. All right, you got it. That was easy, huh? Oh, you wanna scrape it all? <laughs> okay. How do you wanna scrape it? Like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just pat it down. Done! You made bread, that's awesome, huh? Now are you, are you gonna put it in the oven? Or do you want me to put it in the oven? Put it in the oven. Me? Yeah. Okay. So the thing with only doing it like this instead of in a loaf pan is you are gonna cut down on your time. It says 45 minutes if you have it in a loaf pan. Just watch it, I usually do about 20 minutes. Uh, you'll see when it starts to brown and then it'll be uh, all crusty so you can just tear it. Okay. Now we are ready, in about 20 minutes, we're gonna be ready to eat tomato soup and we're gonna have crusty bread. We're gonna to top it with some fresh basil, which is amazing. It's a big bowl, but with tomato soup, golly, I could eat my weight in tomato soup, especially with homegrown tomatoes. Now we're gonna put some fresh basil in there and it's gonna be so good. I'm gonna chop some up too, but I always like to have some fresh pieces in there. And that's gonna be delicious with my bread. And I think the bread is done, so I'm gonna grab it out of the oven. Nice. And I'm gonna grab a spoon. Give me a tear. Yeah. And this is gonna be hot. Woo! Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get it loose first. I really believe in parchment paper, but it's stuck. Now it's time to try our tomato soup. So if y'all like this video, please subscribe. All of the ingredients that we use will be in the description as well as our recipe links. So please check them out and y'all have a tasty week. It's delicious.
He's always in the kitchen whenever it's time to eat.